Hi, my name is Mark Friday. I'm an assemblage sculptor and a printmaker. And here we are at the Dark Fang Studios in Denver, Colorado. Uh, I'm sharing the studio with my partner, Deborah, who is behind the camera, Deborah Jang. So we call it the Dark Fang Studios. It's a composite of our names. It's the D from Deborah and the Arc from Mark, and the F from Friday and the Ang from Jang, Dark Fang Studios. We're both uh, art teachers and artists. Uh, we teach at the Art Students League of Denver, here in Denver, Colorado. And I'm gonna do a little uh, demo for you on how I join things together. So I use a lot of parts, random parts, as you can see around, uh, mostly wood and metal are my two prime materials. And then joining things together is the challenge, how to put random things together so that they're sturdy and they look like they belong together. So I separate out my equipment, my materials I should say, into boxes. Here we have a box of random sheet metal. Here we have a box of wood parts. On the top here is a level. This is here to remind me to always do my level best. Behind me I have parts labeled rulers, vacuum tubes, electrical components, and one box full of thermometers, corkscrews, and bullets. And here's my trusty sidekick here, helps me through the hard times, gives me advice. So when I join things together, I primarily use physical methods, screws, bolts, nuts, washers, nails, and the reason I do that is because I want them to be sturdy, dependable, and oftentimes I'll need to change something once I've done it, once I put it together. So it gives me an option to remove the screws or bolts, move it over to where I want it, and reattach it. So to use adhesives would be hard to do that because once, once you use them, they dry, they set, they're pretty strong, you'd have to break them up and. Uh, I do use adhesive sometimes, primarily E6000, and some super glue. But for the most part, I try to avoid them. I sometimes use them in conjunction with a physical method. So today, I'm going to show you how to put things together using custom brackets. Some you can buy from the hardware store, some you can make yourself. Most of these I'm gonna show you I've made myself. Some are made out of metal, some are made out of wood. And I'll show you how I use them. This first piece here is a figurative piece. Uh, it's both a freestanding piece and it can hang from the wall. There's a hanging hook there. So my challenge was to figure out how to join this wooden box, partial box, to the base. Since I cut the box, this box apart from a larger box, there was no uh, end piece such as there is here. So to go in through the bottom and try to hit that would be a little challenging. So I made a bracket. You can see here there's a piece of metal bent at a 90 degree angle, has four holes drilled, two go into the base, two go into the side, and on the other side, another set, of very similar ones, and that holds it together. I've used materials that I've already previously used on the piece at the top. This curved piece here has kind of a waffle texture, and so that adds a continuity of the piece for, uh, for design continuity. This next one, this one's called Sea Level. And Sea Level was part of a title of a show that was held in Maine, a group show that both Deborah and I were in a few years ago. So I thought it'd be fun to do a piece that said Sea Level. So I found this piece of wood, nautical piece of wood that was actually an ashtray. And I took the glass part out and I cut out a section to made it into a C, with a C part of sea level. 
and then I have levels cut up and attached on the sides and on top. So in order to attach the C part, I wanted to come off the background a bit. I made a series of three brackets with two 90 degree bends in them. One that attaches to the backing and one attaches to the screw. I mean to the, with a screw to the C. You have to put that on first, obviously, because you can't get behind there. So that is a sturdy attachment and um, sets it off an uh, inch or so from the, from the background. They are bolted on, drilled a hole through the backing, onto the back, and attached a bolt with a nut and a washer to hold them in place. Next one is more of a shelf to hold a piece of sculpture. So the shelf consists of a vertical part, a horizontal part. Those two are joined together a number of ways. But on the side, I made these brackets. This was already a pre-cut piece of random metal. And I just cut off a chunk of it, drilled some holes, put a little paint on there so that it kind of blends in with the rest of the pieces. So there's one on this side, there's one on that side, and they make it very sturdy. It's also attached here and here, and that would hang on the wall with a piece of sculpture on there. Here's another one, another figurative piece made from three separate pieces of wood of different heights. So on the back, I've cut out two pieces of sheet metal, drilled four holes in each and attached them there. And that holds it together pretty sturdily, except for this is, has a, a little bit of a bendability in it. And it wouldn't be real strong, but for this purpose, it's fine. So on the bottom piece, I've actually added a bracket here a uh, little narrow strip with a, a bend in it, two holes, and it's attached here and attached there. That makes it stronger. And it's, it's, no, it's similar materials that I've used in the upper part of the sculpture. Here's a big one called Nimbus because it has a, a abstract cloud forms. And what I want to show you is how I attach this piece of curve here, because it doesn't have much there to attach to. So I made two brackets, one for each side. And here it is here, sheet metal, slightly curved. But it splits apart about halfway down. One part goes up here attaches into the back side. The other comes down and attaches into the side. And the side piece I put on before I put this one on. And then let me turn around the back here. Sometimes the backs turn out better than the fronts, but I think uh, I like the front better on this one. So here's some more brackets here. This was a store-bought bracket, it's thicker, more sturdy that I cut chunks off of. And uh, put two of them on there and that helps that holds that into place. Another one here has a 90 degree bend in it and two screws going into the the base and two going into the the curved disc part. We have one more here. So I attached this piece on the top. It was a, a wooden coaster cut in half. And I wanted that to be sturdy and I wasn't able to go through the bottom very well because of all this closeness and this piece here. So what I did was I cut a small piece of wood and drilled two holes in 
and attach two to go into the, the wooden box and two go into the coaster there so it's sturdy. So what I'm going to do now is a little demo to show you how I make some of these uh, brackets. So I have a variety of different materials I use. This is a uh, aluminum flashing you get on a roll from the hardware store and I sand it to take away some of its um, you know um, characteristics especially if it's a piece of uh, galvanized steel on one side you can see the pattern of uh, and the other side it's sanded and I round the corners a little bit to make it more unique so this can be bent in a 90 degree angle it's simply by putting it in here in the vise this is my only vise that I'm allowed to use in here. And it's just a matter of pounding it down. It's a 90 degree angle, real nice 90 degree angle. There you have it. And then to drill a hole in it, I'll drill one hole in there just to show you the process. Um, first mark it. I'm going to mark all four. Then I take a punch and a hammer, place it on the mark, tap it, and it makes a, a dent in there. And the reason for that is when I drill it, it has a place for the drill bit to land. And so it doesn't travel around when, before you get the hole started. So there you have a hole. So I would drill four, but I won't do that now. You get the idea. So for this piece here, I want to join the box to the base. Since I had cut the box, part of it off, I didn't have a, a nice bottom to it. If I had a bottom to it, then it would be like more like doing that. I would drill a hole here and here and put a screw in here and there, and that would be sturdily attached. But since I don't have that, it's pretty narrow here. I made these brackets out of wood molding, a piece like this. So to do that, you take this up here, place it up here, make a mark. And so I have a number of ways to cut this. I have a miter saw, power saw, which would do a really quick cut, but I'm going to show you another way in case you don't have that. I'm going to use a hacksaw. I'll put this in the clamp again to hold it steady. And then I'm going to clamp this device to the table. Move that out of the way. Grab my hacksaw. Here it is here. Primarily used for cutting metal, but it also works for wood. It gives you a nice, nice cut. So drilling holes in that is similar to what I just did. Mark it. Something like that. Now I'll grab my drill. I'm 
You could do a punch if you think it's going to travel, but usually wood is better. I'm cutting out another piece of wood so that I don't drill holes in my work table. ready to go. I'm going to use another one that's already been pre-painted and pre-drilled. So that's going to go right there. So I put this on here. I often use a clamp, like an extra hand, hold it in place. So I'm going to use a number six screw here to go in the sides. Well, the reason I'm using that is because it's short enough to go through both of them, but not all the way through to the other side. Grab my other drill. Excuse me. Add one. Second one. Try to line up the holes best I can. I'm going to use a longer screw, but a less diameter. And I'll go in there like that. I'm going to use an actual screwdriver. I wish I had a longer one, but this will have to do. Goes in there like that. the other side in, one on the other side first. Then the second one here. have been pre-drilled. That's why they go in fairly easily. And the last one, whoops. So there it is, joined together as if one. Whoops, not quite right. Let's back these out. Okay, there we go. That's ready for the next step, whatever that might be. So I hope these methods have helped. 
Uh, maybe they may not pertain to what you're doing, what you're working on, um, but maybe it'll give you some ideas of how you can join things together in your own projects. So the whole experience, I find, should be uh, a joyful one. So uh, if you're not having fun with it, you're not doing it right. So thanks for watching.